Dr. Justine Cluck and I'm a dermatologist. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my evening skincare routine for acne and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. I'm a consultant dermatologist, which is the term we use in the UK for board certified dermatologist. And my main area of clinical interest is acne and acne treatment. I've been fascinated with the skin for as long as I can remember. Some of my earliest memories were of sitting at the edge of my grandmother's bed, watching her at her dressing table performing her morning skincare routine. She would apply layers of serum and face cream and then her makeup would go on and I would watch this transformation take place and I was completely transfixed. My own personal skincare journey started around the age of 12 when I developed breakouts. They were never particularly terrible, but really got to me. I was very self-conscious about my skin. And I remember my dad saying to me, don't worry, it happens to everyone, you'll grow out of it. And I was waiting to grow out of it and it wasn't happening. So I would find whatever I could at home, toothpaste or something like that, apply it to my spots, which is the term we use in the UK for pimples or breakouts and I would conceal them and I would hope no one would notice, but I was pretty sure that they could. And eventually my mom took me to see a dermatologist actually to get a mole on my shoulder checked. And when we entered the office, the first thing the dermatologist said to me was, what are you doing about your acne? And I remember my response to this was a mixture of horror and relief. Horror because clearly I wasn't imagining it. I really had acne and if you know, this dermatologist could see it, probably everyone else could. But relief really that this issue was actually being acknowledged. It wasn't in my head, I wasn't making it up. And here was someone who wants to help me and had effective treatment that was going to help me. And that was really a pivotal moment for me. And it showed me the power that a good dermatologist can have. Many skin conditions are long-term. They're often very visible. And if you have the tools to manage these conditions, not only can the skin be more comfortable, but also you can really help improve someone's self-esteem. I then went to medical school with the view of becoming a dermatologist. I went to medical school in the year 2000. I qualified as a doctor in 2005 and then I started the rigorous specialization process to become a dermatologist and I eventually became a board certified dermatologist in 2013. These days I have the privilege of running my own dedicated acne clinic. So having treated the full spectrum of skin conditions, I came Came back to acne and this is the condition I'm most passionate about treating. I have the real honor of helping other people who've been through similar journeys to get their acne under control and to be able to get on with life and not have acne take over. That's a really, really fulfilling job. I would describe my own skin type as acne prone. And I think it's fair to say for many people, acne is a long-term condition. So it started for me around the age of 12. It got better with treatment over the years, but I do still get breakouts from time to time, most notably during pregnancy two years ago. And my little girl is now two. But I would say I probably get a breakout once a month or once every couple of months. And you've caught me today in the midst of one, that's real life for you. One of the problems with acne is a condition called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. We sometimes also call this post-inflammatory erythema. Erythema means redness and hyperpigmentation means an increase in pigmentation and that often translates to brown marks or dark marks on the skin. So when an acne pimple gets better, it can leave these reddish or brownish marks on the skin afterwards. In my opinion, a good skincare routine for acne will also tackle hyperpigmentation. So I think we should try to encompass both of these in the routine and that's certainly what I do for myself. So I'm gonna talk you through my skincare routine one at a time, starting with makeup removal. The product I use to remove my makeup or step one of my skincare routine is a micellar water. I really like micellar waters because they're a gentle but effective way of removing makeup, sunscreen, and the grease and dirt that accumulates on the surface of the skin throughout the day. The molecules in micellar water are like little sponges or magnets and they stick to this material and you can just swipe it off the skin without having to scrub or rub vigorously. I am really a fan of treating the skin with the utmost respect I don't like scrubs, I don't like cleansing devices, just clean fingertips. And this is the micellar water that I'm going to be using today. 
So it's the Garnier Micellar Cleansing Water for Sensitive Skin. I'm going to apply it to a couple of cotton pads. I use it to remove my eye makeup as well as my face makeup. So you'll see now that I've removed my makeup that I do have an ongoing breakout just there and a little bit of post-inflammatory erythema or hyperpigmentation just there. Now that I've removed my makeup, I'm gonna move on to the second part of my skincare routine. And this is my gentle cleanser. This is the cleanser I'm going to be using. It's the Aven Extremely Gentle Cleanser Lotion. I like a gel or a cream cleanser. I find them much better tolerated than a foaming cleanser, which would tend to dry my skin out. And because I'm going to be using strong active ingredients later on in my routine, if everything else is gentle and mild, I'm much more likely to be able to tolerate those. So this product looks like that. I'll massage that into my skin for 30 to 60 seconds. Doesn't sting or burn my eyes. You don't rinse this cleanser off, which I like because if you tend to have skin that might be a little sensitive, which many of us do, particularly if you're using prescription creams for acne, then splashing your face with warm water can increase redness, flushing and blushing. So being able to just wipe this off gently with cotton pads is a real bonus in my eyes. So let me just show you how that looks. And I can see I've managed to remove my makeup. So I now have a nice clean canvas upon which to apply the rest of my skincare routine. Okay, so now that my skin is clean, you can probably see that I also have a little bit of melasma, which is a hormonal pigmentary condition aggravated by ultraviolet exposure that I developed during pregnancy. So having a routine for tackling acne, but also post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation also takes into account my melasma. So with that in mind, the next product I'm going to show you is a targeted treatment serum. And I'm going to be using the SkinCeuticals Discoloration Defense Serum. This serum is a mixture of niacinamide, kojic acid, and tranexamic acid, as well as a proprietary ingredient from SkinCeuticals, which is targeted at reducing hyperpigmentation in the skin. So regulating pigmentation, evening skin tone, and brightening the skin. It's a liquid serum, and it comes with a dropper. So I'm going to drop one, two, three, four, five drops. And then I'm going to spread that over my face. Now, it's important that when you have acne prone skin, that you try to choose products that are non-comedogenic, which means non-pore blocking for your skincare routine. This particular serum, as well as all of the other products I'm using are non-comedogenic. This sinks in fast, it's non-tacky, non-greasy, and I'll leave this for five minutes or so and go and brush my teeth so that it can sink in before I continue with the rest of my routine. Next up, I'm going to apply my prescription retinoid cream. This is tretinoin. Tretinoin helps to act as a chemical exfoliator. So it helps to lift and remove mature skin cells, which would otherwise mix with oils and block the pores, lead to congestion, blackheads, and acne. It is a strong product, so you have to work up to it. I will have introduced it gradually when I first started using it, but I'm now a seasoned pro, so to speak. So for people starting to use prescription retinoids like tretinoin, I would usually suggest using it one or two evenings a week for the first couple of weeks, then alternate evenings for two to four weeks, and then eventually every evening. 
If you introduce a retinoid cream very quickly, you can get what's called a retinoid dermatitis and the skin gets red and dry and it flakes and it peels and it can be really uncomfortable. Slow and steady wins the race with this. There's my pea-sized blob and I'm going to spread it evenly over my face and I tend to avoid my eyes and lips because the skin is thinner and more delicate in those areas and so I would get irritation if I applied it to those sites. Now with a retinoid cream, ideally you would leave it for 15 minutes or so to sink in before applying moisturizer so that the moisturizer doesn't dilute the retinoid cream and reduce its effectiveness. Before I do that though, I'm going to apply my eye cream. So the eye cream that I'm using is this one. It's the Aven Physio Lift for Eyes, and this contains an over-the-counter vitamin A derivative called retinaldehyde. That's what it looks like. And this product is specifically formulated for use around the eyes. I apply it below the eyes, over the crow's feet area, and just under the brow bone. And now I'm going to leave it to work its magic for 15 minutes along with the tretinoin before I move on and moisturize. The next step is to moisturize. The product I'm using is this one from Medicate. It's called Advanced Night Restore. Let me show you what it looks like. So this moisturizer contains a ceramide complex. Ceramides are great for soothing, smoothing and softening the skin and helping to restore the integrity of the skin barrier. I'm applying a generous quantity and I'm going to smooth that over my entire face, including my eyes. And it feels lovely and cooling and soothing. It's really important to moisturize daily, even if you have acne. It certainly helps you to tolerate the prescription retinoid cream much better. And I find that people who avoid moisturizer because they're worried about their pores getting clogged tend not to be able to tolerate the prescription cream as well, which then limits the effectiveness of their treatment. Now, you'll sometimes hear a technique referred to called the retinoid sandwich. This is a technique whereby you apply moisturizer first to your whole face, then you apply your retinoid cream, so the tretinoin in my case, and then you wait the 15 minutes and apply the moisturizer again. I do sometimes do that, but I also have another trick. So having applied the tretinoin, waited 15 minutes, and then the moisturizer, I then take a product like this from Aven. It's the Sickle Fate Plus. Equally well, I like the La Roche-Posay Sycoplast Balm as an alternative. I would then apply this in a targeted way to the most dry areas on the skin or those that tend to get irritated most frequently. So for me, that's the areas here around the sides of my nose, often this sort of crease here just across my chin and sometimes around the eyes. It's a little thicker and stiffer than the moisturizer that I used earlier. So I just sort of patch treat these areas where I tend to get irritation. And this is a tip I share with a lot of my patients and has helped them to get over that barrier to retinoid use. The other place I quite like, this is on the neck and the decollete because the skin is thinner at those sites and often people can't tolerate their retinoid cream or their over-the-counter retinol even at those sites if they're treating from an anti-aging perspective. So following the retinol with uh, something like the Sickle Fate Plus can really help to um, improve tolerance at that site too. And then last but not least, I'm going to apply a product to my lips. So the product I'm going to use is this one. It's the GlossierBalm.com and this is BirthdayBalm.com. So it's a clear lip balm. This one contains a little bit of glitter, which I think is not an essential for the evening routine, but it's the one I have to hand. So it's the one I'm showing you. So now I've 
done my treatment, I've moisturized, I've applied my lip balm, and that's the end of my evening skincare routine for acne and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. I'm Dr. Justine Cluck, consultant dermatologist and acne expert. You can find me at drjustinecluck.com or on Instagram at drjustinecluck. I hope you found these tips helpful and I'd love to hear your thoughts.